Hello everyone, it's Matt M and welcome back to my channel. I make clinical laboratory science content every single week and if you are interested in that type of content, then consider subscribing to my channel, ring that bell to get notified and yeah, let's get started. Here we are, junior year of my medical laboratory science journey. In Adventist University of the Philippines, we actually call third year and fourth year clinical division. Disclaimer, if I keep switching the word CD or clinical division or third year or fourth year in this video, just know that I'm referring to my last two years in the university. And to be honest, this is the hardest year of my college journey. It's because there's a lot of major subjects and these are actually the subjects that will be in the board exam so there's a lot of pressure to know and memorize and understand the concepts of everything that has been taught before entering third year in August 2016 we actually had to go through a qualifying examination so in this exam it is comprised of organic chemistry inorganic chemistry biochemistry and qualitative and quantitative chemistries and it also had statistics and college algebra and some physics and genetics that was 50% of the exam and the other 50% of the exam will be coming from the introduction to medical laboratory science. For me, I had a hard time during this exam but luckily I passed. So after passing the qualifying exam, you also have to take another exam. So this happens a couple days before entering the first day of school and then you would go through an orientation and it's funny because they say it's an orientation so you would assume it's just a bunch of like professors explaining their college syllabi but you're wrong. It's actually a bunch of classes. So we had our phlebotomy class here and then we also had introduction to laboratory safety and then we also had some introduction to different departments in the lab and then we also had some microscopy training. <sighs> These couple days before entering the first day of third year was really tough because this orientation exam would actually have some bearing because we were told that a part of this exam would be our grade for lab management which would be a subject that will be taught in the future. It was hard. It was a hard exam. So there was a written exam where we, everything we learned from the orientation would be on the exam and then there would be a practical part as well. All we had to do was look at the microscope and then focus. As stained slide and then a unstained slide because there are differences in lighting so that you can see the organisms in the slide. And for phlebotomy, we were taught how to extract blood. It was hard because we were taught like two days and then we would be graded afterwards. These are the subjects that I took. I will put it on the screen. I remember I was so excited because it's a new uniform, a new life. So the first subject that I took is clinical chemistry. I learned a lot about glucose and lipids and urea and creatinine. Just a bunch of like chemistry tests. It was hard to study because there are a lot of color reactions that you have to remember and then you also have to study the old methods and then the new methods. Some professors would require you to memorize certain and lab values because they would say that this is really important and you also have to learn how to interpret them like say what does hyperglycemia entail what does hypoglycemia entail what does the clinical presentation look like there's a lot of things that you have to know in chemistry because majority of the diagnosis is done through lab testing another thing that i remember in chemistry was studying automations and then the principles behind certain instruments and this is really hard for me because i'm not really a big fan of studying machines but this is part of the gig you have to study different ways and different methods how certain analytes are measured aside from learning the principle you also have to understand why we're doing this so the second subject that I took is clinical microscopy 1 otherwise known as urinalysis and other body fluids and in this class we learned about the physical chemical and microscopic examinations done on urine so the physical exam includes quantitating the volume of the urine and then you would also grade the color and clarity and aside from that you would also do the chemical portion basically you have to dip the reagent pad onto the urine and then after dipping it into urine you would see color reactions on the pad and then after that you would grade the color reaction specifically and accordingly the third part that urine goes through is microscopic examination you'd see um, different kinds of cells I remember in our urinalysis lab my professor would be like okay 
okay, if you bring a really interesting sample, and by interesting, she meant like samples with something in them, maybe like trichomonas or like urine with blood on it. So anything with crystals, my teacher would give a bonus points. So basically, if your quiz was like 7 out of 10 and you brought a sample with really interesting stuff in it, then you'll get an 8 out of 10 instead of a 7 out of 10. I remember we also had to do a sim analysis. You and your microscope will be best friend in this class. For my next class, it's histology. In histology, there's a lot of memorizing involved. In the lecture part, you would learn about the different tissues in the body and where they are commonly seen. In the laboratory portion, it's just a bunch of like you coming into class, looking at the microscope, and then taking pictures of what you see in the microscope and then filling up the worksheet. So in histology laboratory, there are two things that you should have. Multicolored pencils and a microscope mount. On our lab worksheet, we had to draw the specific things that we see in the microscope onto paper. I'm not the best artist, so I had a really hard time drawing, but I remember this was um, my best friend during that time. I had this multicolored pencil. If you press on it, there'd be lead coming out of it. When I was in college, I don't actually have a microscope mount, but now that I'm a working professional, I do. Next subject is bacteriology. The lecture part is like we learn a bunch of organisms from gram-positive cocci to gram-negative rods to gram-positive rods and gram-negative cocci. In the laboratory part, it's really fun because we had to identify organisms through different biochemical testing. So we would have indole and methyl red, Vogsproskauer and citrate. Actually, our first lab experiment was like a bunch of preparations. We would cook agar plates. Basically like a bunch of college students making jello. <laughs> Think about it that way. We'd also make like our own cotton swabs, roll it up and then put it on the bag and then put it on the autoclave. Aside from that, we would identify different organisms. Sometimes there are also some organisms with special characteristics. One time we had this urine sample which had like this swarming effect which was really fun because these are first time scientists and then we would see it on our plate and it'd be like, wow, that is very proteus. And aside from that, we also saw the green metallic sheen on EMB characteristic for E. coli, which was really cool to see because everything you're studying in the lecture is actually being applied in the laboratory portion. Aside from that, we also had to learn how to do a gram stain. We learned how to do an acid fast stain in one of our labs as well because AFB is actually a routine test in the Philippines. So next subject is immunology and serology for the lecture class I had a really hard time to be honest because there is a bunch of like Y's and circles there'd be like sandwich reactions just a lot of things going on for some reason it's just not clicking with me my prelims and then my midterms wasn't that good but at the pre-finals finals class I started getting the concepts more quickly I was the captain of the struggle bus during this class but I got through it. The laboratory portion of this class was pretty easy. Let's just say that. Two drops of samples on the cassette and then you would look at it and be like, okay, two lines, it is positive. End of activity. <laughs> after the first semester, we were actually asked to stay after the final exam because usually you just wait for the grades in the student portal. In our university, like we still did it the old-fashioned way. Evaluation day is what we call it, which is kind of a weird way of calling it because it's kind of like judgment day. There would be a post on the bulletin board of, and then you would look for your name and you'd be like, okay, M is assigned to professor blank and then after that you would meet up with the professor and then the professor would give you tips give you encouragement if you fail or like sometimes it's a really sad case where people are advised to shift to a different program because they're not cutting it luckily my first evaluation day went really well here's my subjects i will put it up on the screen again and no doubt this is the hardest Semester of my life, first subject is Clinical Chemistry 2. We studied a bunch of enzymes like ALT, AST, ALKFOS, and GGT. Uh, just a bunch of enzymes. Like Clinical Chemistry 1, we also had to study the old methods and then the new methods. 
<sighs> and then we also had to study color reactions. We also studied trace elements and we also studied like different vitamins. Our next subject is basic pharmacology and it's called basic pharmacology for a reason because in this subject we just studied about basically everything that involves antibiotic, antifungals, antiretrovirals, TB drugs. It's just really basic. Every drug that you will encounter in your MLS field, that's the kind of drugs that you'll be studying in this subject. Lot of memorization, that's for sure, but at least there's no laboratory. So next subject is parasitology. I really like parasitology a lot because it studied about like the different life cycles of the parasite. So you know how when you're a kid and then they taught you the life cycle of a butterfly? It's basically the same thing, but make it parasites. Let's just say it's a very visual class. You would also identify different parts of the parasites. Okay, this is the head of the parasite and then this is the tail, something like that. In our laboratory, we learned about fecalysis. On our normal fecalysis, we would mount it on iodine and then we'd also mount it on normal saline solution. Then we would look at it at the microscope. I remember bringing a sample with Ascaris lumbricoides egg. Everyone was like, oh my gosh, where'd you get it? Blah, blah, blah. But my dad actually works in a public health setting. So there's a bunch of poop samples that's just brought into his physician laboratory. So he brought it to me and then I brought it to class and I had plus points and that was fun. <laughs> we also did a concentration technique. Don't want to be graphic. Let's put a disclaimer here but think of the poop and then we had a little strainer where we have to sieve it and then the sieved part we have to put it on the slide and then we had this like um, stencil where we would just have to put it there and it had to be as thick as the stencil and then after that we would get a cellophane dipped in malachite green and then we had to put it and that was that was really gross to be honest we did it under the hood obviously because poop is tanky the stench is part of the learning process so in hematology you would think like a CBC is too broad of a picture to diagnose a patient but it's actually not especially if a slide review is done or a manual diff was done times like a scientist would see like specific poikilocytes that pathognomonic for a certain disease like say sickle cells on the slide in this class my preference professor's approach into teaching is a lot of case studies so really hard to be honest because these are people learning hematology for the first time and then they're trying to diagnose the disease already. In our lab activity we did a manual red cell count, we did a manual WBC count, we did a manual platelet count, we also did manual retic counting and aside from that we also did a, a lot of peripheral blood smears and then we had to stain them and then read them. Yeah um, that's hematology for you. In histopathology techniques this is the type of class that's actually really boring <laughs> I have no other words to describe it the class would just be filled with okay these are this is the best fixative and then these are the alternatives memorize all of them. The laboratory part of this class was very interesting because this was my first time where I had to come into class at like 5 in the morning in our uniforms and then my professor brought a bunch of like samples. We had intestines, heart samples, and liver samples. Since we're students, there's no pathologist in our class. We had to like cut the human intestines, cut liver samples, and then put it on a cassette. And then after that, we had to like put it on the fixative, put it on the dehydrating agent, put it on the clearing agent, and then uh, put it on the infiltrating agent. It was a lot of work. So after dipping it, we had to put it on the paraffin wax, cut it down, and then trim it, and then put it on the slide, and then it was a bunch of work. We were there until like 11 at night, still doing one experiment and next subject is medtech laws and bioethics and in this class to be honest it's not really super groundbreaking it's just a bunch of history class but make it medical technology a lot of memorization let's just say that the next subject is mycology and virology like the name entails we studied about fungi and then we also studied about viruses for me I had a hard time memorizing the uh, mycology part because for some reason one specific fungus have multiple names 
So it's really hard to distinguish what they're referring to, especially on a case type of situation. At least in virology, it's very consistent. And then there's also like a common name. That's pretty much it. Next subject is blood banking. And this is a very time consuming subject to study because you would assume that before coming into blood banking that there is only this major group, A, B, A, B, and O. And you could either be RH positive or RH negative, but you are wrong. Um, there are a lot of major blood group systems that are there like Duffy blood group system, Kid blood group system, Lewis, Kel, yeah, a lot of blood group system. And then there, aside from that, there are minor blood group systems. There is a lot of statistics that you have to study here too, especially if you're in a multiracial country like the United States. Lab experiments here in my college years, we didn't have gel cards, which is what we use in my hospital laboratory right now. I learned how to manually cross-match a patient in my lab activities there. We, I also learned how to do a DAT test. I also learned how to do the IAT and forward typing, reverse typing. After the final exam on my second semester, we went through um, the second evaluation day and this was a really heavy one because it was a really loaded semester. Spoiler alert, I live on to be fourth year and if you would like to see more of this type of content, clinical laboratory science content, then consider subscribing to my channel. Give this video a thumbs up because it would really help my channel grow and comment down below if you have some more video content ideas that you would like me to do. Don't forget to wash your hands and I will see you on the next one. Bye!